Handmade Podcast. I'm Tara. And I'm Misty. And this is episode 14. We are going to talk about curls, what we're working on, and uh, all kinds of stuff. Giveaways. Yes. Lots of giveaways, actually. So, um, speaking of giveaways, I will just jump right into it. Yeah. <laughs> I won, or, or no, I entered to win Space Cadet Stephanie of Space Cadet Yarns is doing a giveaway of Hunter Hammerson's book, Curls, which we went on about last week, yes. loving so much. Let me get it here. Um, curls. And I entered to win, and I tweeted, oh my goodness, I love this book, I've been obsessed over it. Well, Hunter saw that, and she <coughs> listens to my business podcast, which we'll link to in the show notes, and she said she was a fan of that, and so she sent me a copy of Curls. So a giant thank you to Hunter. Also, you guys should get this book. Absolutely. <laughs> and the, um, the contest to enter is still open, so we're going to link to Space Cadet Yarns contest to win curls because Space Cadet has a yarn on one of these curls, and so she's giving away, it's actually a kit. It's not just a book, it's the book oh, and yarn. Cool. So you guys should enter to win, because now I have mine, so I guess I'm not eligible anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so you started a curl. Yes, I started one, but I messed up on the ends and kind of just frogged it. I haven't ripped it out yet, but I've took it off the needles. I love it. And what yarn is that? This is Miss Babs, and I don't remember it what colorway it is so sorry <laughs> but this is how far I got and this end part you can see kind of how it already started to curl around it, yeah and so really it was totally my fault it, it's not that the pattern is all that complicated you can see that it goes that you know I wasn't sure about using this yarn where it's so variegated but it goes in like columns so it really wasn't bad for a variegated you know yarn it would work fine but what I did was I um, I thought for some reason that I had dropped a yarn over. And so I picked one up. And so I go to the end of the row and guess what? I have one stitch too many. <laughs> oh, so no. I tink back and I can't decide which stitch to drop. <laughs> so I drop a stitch and it's the wrong one. And it's oh, in the no. middle of yarn overs underneath of it. And usually I'm good. I can pick stuff. Yeah. I could not pick it back up, so it was. I would have had to rip out a couple rows, and I don't think I could really rip out with the way the ends are. It's mm -hmm. like you go in and you knit and wrap twice, and mm. so it would have been. It would have made my head hurt trying to rip <laughs> back, and so I just quit. And and I was I was very on the fence about it anyway, as far as with that yarn. Mm -hmm. I like the curl. It's one of the more not really plain, but it's not intricate. It's not right. one of the intricate patterns, and so I thought it would work good for that, but it's not one of the patterns that I'm in love with. I liked it because of how that one in particular hung like a spiral, mm -hmm. and it was the cerise, so if yeah. you want to know, <clears throat> yeah, look it up there. But it hung like a spiral, and I like that about it, but I really think uh, it would have been okay in worsted, and they've done some of these in worsted, but I think it would have been better in a... And yarn. I wondered about your the fabric you were getting with your yarn and your needles. What size needle were you using? Because um, that seemed like it a was really... a pretty big. It was like a probably a seven or eight. Because that's it seemed like a really loose fabric, whereas this fabric is a little more dense. Yeah, I'm guessing. I mean, just by looking at it. Um, I was afraid that if I did some, with worsted yarn, I was afraid if I did something too dense that it wouldn't mm -hmm. drape well. Mm, yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. So that's, I, I did like probably an eight on that, I would guess. And her sample is knit and fingering. Like <coughs> yeah, so. and so I think it would be prettier yeah. in a sporter fingering. Yeah. But that was I'm just. sorry. That's okay. At least <laughs> I did it, you know, when it was this big instead of this big. Yeah, exactly. And it was your knit night project for most of the night, right? Yeah. On Friday, so. Well, not too, not, not too much. I, I, I had got to the heel turn of a sock, so I just couldn't do that, and. So, yeah. <laughs> well, it's pretty. We'll cast on again. And when I'm done with my sweater, I'm going to cast on one. So, maybe we'll be knitting yeah, along. Yeah, that'll be great. So, what else are you working on? So, after that, after on, that was Friday night. On Saturday, mm -hmm. I was like, I need to cast on something else. And I couldn't settle on a pattern for the Miss Babs yarn. So, I have this other yarn that you gave me. It's Yarn Love. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, and actually, so much done on it. Yarn Love sent it to us. Um, what, what, do you remember what the base is called? Is it Anne Shirley? Um, I will look. I have okay. the. You have the label. I do not. I have it right here. <laughs> Hang on a second. So that yarn was sent to us by Yarn Love, and Katie is awesome. Yes, and... thank you, thank you, <laughs> And so this, there's the. Oh, no, it's Elizabeth Bennett. Elizabeth Bennett. And it's. And it's 
65% super fine merino, 20% bamboo, and 15% silk. Oh, man. And there was two. It it's a, so good. The colorway is hot, hot couture. I can't even say it. Hot couture? Yes. Maybe? Yes. And so, I want to say hot. Yeah. <laughs> it is. And so, it's hot pink, and I love it. Uh, it's a great color pink, and um, I'm afraid, though, I'm going to get sick of pink because <laughs> I have just finished knitting um, that that shawl, that heart oh, shawl yeah, in yeah. hot pink, and then this, and I was considering doing my uh, featherweight and pink. <laughs> I have, con I've talked about it with some people on um, Ravelry, and I had considered a yellow, but the yellow I ended up dying being, uh, it was more of a wheat, and mm -hmm. so it was, it's right over there. It's pretty. It was really pretty, but it was more of a fall color, mm -hmm. and so, I just can't sit on yellow. I can't see me reaching for it. I just yeah. don't see it. Yeah, with and with my coloring, and I think we have similar coloring. We're pale with yeah. pale hair. <laughs> I always feel like yellow. <laughs> I just look um, monochrome. Like yeah. it just blends into my skin and my hair. And uh, I don't know. That's why I go so with I, pink and blue and black as right. like some contrast. So I really like the color, but I really think I need a shawl or something in it before I commit to a cardigan or sweater. Yeah. And then don't like it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Because I could, if I make a shawl and don't like it, it's so easy to give that away as a gift. So, you know, right. My mom would love it, I'm sure. Right. But if you make a cardigan and... You're really committed to it. <laughs> so what's the pattern you're knitting? This you the yarn is... Let me look because <laughs> I've forgotten. Or Orchid. It's the Orchid Cow. And um, it is really a cute... Forgive me, because I didn't write down who it's by. I did. I've not we'll link updated to it. my show notes, but yeah, yeah. I'll link to it. <laughs> but you, um, <clears throat> you knit this pattern, and then you do a um, stockinette um, for a while, and with a couple garter rows in between. I was trying to find the thing, but um, my sons have a bunch of junk pulled up on my. <laughs> And then I've turned it black, so yeah, I'm not doing too well this morning. <laughs> well, that's okay. So so this is the Orchid orchid Cow. We'll link to it in the show notes, and it's out of Yarn Love Yard. It's so yes. pretty. Does it have a front and a back? I think it's... Um... Um, oh, yeah. Yes, it does. It you has You can see a... the little flowers. Here, I found it. Yay. Oh, that's pretty. Oh, and my okay. iPad is old. It will not turn to the side to make that the right thing. But isn't that pretty? You can see it does the, the lace pattern for a little while and then goes into stocking it with a couple garter rows thrown mm. in here and there. I like it. I like it. And so that will be a nice, you can wear it. It's just a big loop or have it doubled. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, yeah, this was the, the perfect amount for it. And I have it at the right place. I worked so hard to get those first lace rows done so I could have <laughs> something to knit on today. <laughs> You've done tons of it. That's awesome. I have. I've done a lot of it. That's awesome. And you... Um, you've got like other, do you have other works in progress to show? You've got so many you're working on. I have these mitts. They're chunky fingerless mitts. I'll link the pattern in the show notes. So I have, pretty. I'm so over mittens. I did the mittens for me and, um, this is what I've got going. I'm two, I did the mm. thumb gusset and I'm getting ready to, to put these stitches on a holder. And finish the hand part. The color is so pretty. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I dyed this myself, and um, it's this. This was a gift for my stepdad. He requested blue, and so I dyed it up. And I'm like, oh, this is just boring. And so I put it back in the pot and put several different color blues back on it, so it would be more tonal. And it does look pretty, but for some reason, I'm just meh. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm I'm sure he'll love it. Um, <clears throat> I've got an extra steam. This yarn's amazing though. It is bulky and it is so I don't know if you can and see. And this yarn me. Is squishy, it squishy. A misty dot yarn. It is a misty dot yarn. There is another one of these in the same color that I will have up in the shop soon. Um, I ordered a light box to take pictures. Excuse me of my my skeins better, and they sent me a damaged one, but they're taking care of it. And so, um, hopefully, I'll get that one day this week because I've got several, as you can kind of maybe see, sitting behind us Beautiful that yarns. are ready <laughs> to be listed. And so, I'm excited to get going again, and I'm trying to. Yeah. <laughs> so by the next by the next episode, <laughs> we'll have a misty dot update for you. And I have a spinning 
whip. Yay. I never spin, so this is like really big. Ooh, that's and pretty. And this is... Is that um, red? It's red, and it's a... I don't know if you can see it good, but it's really pretty tonal red. And I had attempted... This is um, 100% Superwash BFL. It is so soft and spins like butter. Mm -hmm. And I've been really happy with how I did pretty good about getting it even. I still feel like I'm such a newbie spinner. Oh, and so, I think it looks great. So, yeah, I've tried to get like a, just a midway. I didn't want something too thin. Um, so, it's probably maybe a, a sport to... to um, yeah. Decay the, or something. The thing is, I think when you take it off and you wash it, <coughs> it tends to um, be plump. Be, yeah. So, oh, no, it is pretty thin. I was thinking maybe it was a worsted, but no, you're right. I don't think it's worsted. I, it, so I'm pretty. going to ply it. I've not really been big uh, about plying, so okay. it'll probably be at least a worsted by the time I get done with it. Okay. So, yeah, it'll look like that. It'll yeah. be beautiful. It's yeah. so pretty. And so, I dyed this up myself, and Ooh. I was pretty happy with it. I um, just kind of played around. And I wanted to get... Um, oh, it's so soft and squishy. You can see, I kind of wanted to get spots of this and that, but the red just kind of overpowered everything, and that's okay. You can see I kind of got, a, you know, bits, bits of tonal, but that's okay. Um, it'll, I think that'll lend itself very nicely in the end to a little bit, you know, here's like a bit of orange and a bit of darker something. and mm, I love it. The Please. lighting in here is, because it's cloudy outside, I feel like you guys can't see the colors of the stuff. But uh, that's a really beautiful color. So, yeah. So, I'm still working on my mom's Isabel, which I am technically counting as a finished object for you, the podcast watchers, today. Because when it is finished, you will not see it. I will, I'm giving it to my mom tomorrow. <sighs> so, I know. So, this one sleeve is done, which you haven't seen yet. Yay, sleeve. Yay. Yay. And it's long. It's really nice and cozy. Um, I don't know. Did I have the... I didn't have the top. Three needle bind off <coughs> for the back neck. Um, you know, it fits like this. There's just one seam in it, which is right here to sew the back neck to the back of it. The back is, you know, done. And this is where I am on... Sorry about that. That's my laundry yarn. <laughs> Actually, with our mics, I don't even know if they could hear that. Okay, good. Maybe you can. Yay, maybe not. Uh, so this is the left <laughs> sleeve, and I only have two more decreases to do. There's a decrease every seventh row. As you see, I just pulled some off the needle, but I'm not worried. Um, yeah, yeah. I've got, like, maybe 11 inches left. <sighs> and I, I even did the math. Like, we had a knit night on Friday, and I had measured my sleeve before I went and then I measured it when I came home and so I saw how fast I knit the sleeve and it was about oh no I'm gonna so I think that we probably knit for three hours <clears throat> without stop that night I mean there was a little more yeah. than three hours because I got up and had hummus and talked to people but and I'd gotten six inches done so I figured that was two inches an hour so I did all the math of all the hours I had left on Friday night, and that was uh, a total of 18 hours. And I could, <laughs> yeah, that freaked me out. Yeah, <laughs> and so I was like, well, so that's You underestimate. You think I was just asleep. Right. And like, oh. No. So then it's six hours a day if I knit Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And I was a little behind Saturday night, and then I caught up on Sunday, and I'm now right on schedule. But that means I have to knit six hours today, and I still have to, like, work today. So Yikes. I'm knitting as fast as I can, and uh, Misty's going to do the show notes and everything to do with getting this podcast up so that I can keep knitting. Um, because... If our gauge wasn't different, I'd offer to help. You know? <laughs> no, definitely. Um <laughs> It is, you forget fingering weight, how long it takes. But, so this, just pretend like you're seeing this sleeve look like this sleeve and say, <laughs> it's a finished sweater. It's so awesome. Because it will be finished by tomorrow. Um, I'm going to finish it tonight, soak is it, Jake block going it. Is with you or are you going by yourself? Oh, no, I'm going by myself. He has to work. Um, so I'm I'm leaving tomorrow for my mom's birthday and we're going to spend a day in Nashville on Wednesday and we're going to go see Issa live. Um, Issa Chandra is the cookbook author of all of our favorite cookbooks. Um, all vegan cookbooks and she is just really funny and yeah um, so we are gonna go it's like a dinner theater thing at a fancy place That's she's cool. gonna be there and make it there's gonna be like a four course meal maybe I told you this last yeah, week no, okay I don't know if you can tell, <laughs> the podcast, you tell me about it yeah so um, 
So I'm going to spend all day Wednesday and then drive home on Thursday morning. But so this, I'm kind of bummed Jay isn't going with me because I can't knit in the car. I know. That's yeah. what I was asking. <laughs> and then we're even going to, I'm sure, take my car to Nashville. And so I'll be driving. Now, how long is it from, to Nashville from where she's at? Only like 45 minutes oh, to an awesome. hour. And we're going to we go. We totally, you need to take, yeah, you need to take it with you. <laughs> yeah, we and, totally could actually. We need to take advantage um, of that. Because, yeah, there are bedrooms and she would love to have you. But there is, she's already, we're going to go to an art supply store. There's a really great oh, art fun. supply store in Nashville. And a um, she found a quilting shop. Oh. And of course there's a yarn store. There's, um, I think it's called Yarn House. It's like H-A-U-S. Like Ooh, the German cool, house. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and that a good sounds like my kind of trip. Yeah, exactly. So that's our plan for Wednesday. Yeah. But because of that, it means I have a whole like day and a half's worth of work. I have to somehow find space for this week and six hours of knitting to do today. So <sighs> <sighs> yeah. if you email me and you don't hear from me, this is why. <laughs> yeah. I've just decided today has to be knitting day and then tomorrow I'll get up to date on the work and then leave tomorrow afternoon. So... Hopefully my mom isn't watching this, because so far I don't think she has any idea about the sweater. I don't know why she would start watching it right now and ruin yeah, the surprise. Yeah, that would be bad. After this, um, I'm going to cast on a curls, and I should have more knitting projects to talk about next week, because this will be all done. But you've actually finished something this week. I did. You're it's just... so stinking cute. Oh, it's so cute. Um, so I was looking around um, and found Tana's Fire Arts pattern that she had did. Oh, it's and so cute. I was like, I showed my friend Jen, and her daughter Addie just turned two, and she's my goddaughter, and I was like, Addie needs this, and she's like, I'll pay for the yarn if you'll knit it. I'm like, whatever, I've got leftovers here, so. Look at that pom-pom. I um, could not love that more. I know, I love that. <laughs> I'm so glad I had this yarn left over. This pink, I don't remember for sure what this is. I want to say it might be Plymouth. I know I got it from a Likely Yarn in Abingdon. Um, but I had this left over and it made for an awesome pom-pom. Look at oh, that. I did. And so, um, the, the blue is, um, I want to say it's, yeah, I, it's, um, my Cecil base, the worsted weight. And I had dyed this up and I had used it for my business cards. I'd knit a swatch and use this color for my business cards. And so I couldn't sell the skein once I've knit a swatch. Right. So I had it just kind of sitting there. And I was like, oh, it's they, the same colors that she did in the pattern. And her pattern, she split between one that her grandmother did. But the, uh, the, the grandmother's pattern was different because it had ribbing up through here. So she really mm -hmm. just used the numbers. Mm -hmm. And when I first did it, it came out way too small. <laughs> this is like an infant size hat. which is the cutest hat i've ever it's seen it's cute it's so tiny i want you so, to keep that for my future baby or your future baby because, uh, i should but i i promised it to the shop already if i make another something i may keep it and say oh no i made this one instead <laughs> that's so because so, yeah i was like why did i say that she could have that but yeah so it's adorable. adorable. And I've got one ear flap on this, and I wasn't really sure the placement of the second one. So I've got the other one done, and I'm just going to wait and try it on adding and kind of just tack. I'm yeah. supposed to see her Wednesday, and so I'm going to tack it on there. It's and I so hope cute. she'll wear it because you know how little kids are, and it has the little pom pom at the end. But yeah, this was just like I love it amazingly so much. cute. That's super cute. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, did you see, I don't know if you've been on Instagram, but did you see Carrie Pickles hat? She mm -hmm. made herself, a, I think she was giving it away or it was a gift or something, but she said she's going to make herself one. And it was a lighter pink and brown mm -hmm. and it had hearts on it. I was like, oh, maybe I need one of those for me too. So I know. I was trying to figure out if I can pull off that giant pom-pom on top of my head. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> did you not see the Hey Lady Hey um, Happy something or other hat pattern? Oh. I don't think it's so. amazing. I don't know if she did it out of bulky or if it was worsted, but it was this chunky hat, and it was just like this, except the brim rolled, and it mm -hmm. had this giant pom-pom on it, and I <laughs> loved it. I still, I don't wear hats very much, but mm -hmm. I love that hat. Aww. And so, yeah, I think they did a knit-along and everything. You'll have to check that out. Um, well, we will link to that pattern. You're going to pull it yes. up when we're done and then show me is what I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll link to it so yes. you can see the Hey Lady hat. Hey, hey Lady Hey is the, she, that's her name on Instagram. Oh, okay. And so, um, 
So yeah, I love you guys on Instagram. Yeah. I'm like <laughs> such an Instagram junkie. So she's Misty Dot and I'm Tara yes. Swiger. And you can use the hashtag handmade podcast and see what other people are using. And also we update when the new show is there. But you should share your pictures of what you're knitting along to or quilting or scrapbooking Absolutely. or whatever as you watch. We want to see we it. We love that. We love I try to do that when I'm watching someone's podcast and um because usually that's when I'm making something is what I'm, you know, yeah. when I watch podcasts. And so I love to see yeah. other people doing that too. So speaking of hashtags, um, I wanted to tell you guys that my publisher, Cooperative <clears throat> Press, is doing a giveaway through Valentine's Day. So from now, we're recording this on February 2nd. It's Groundhog Day. Happy Groundhog Day. Happy Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, through, I, my phone just alerted me. Oh, and wow. I was like, thanks. Um, <laughs> through February 14th. And it's called Share CP Cooperative Press Love. You use the hashtag Share CP Love on any tweet or Instagram picture. So if, like, you knit the Sock Out of Sock Architecture, mm -hmm. which is a CP book, so you can take a picture of it and share it with hashtag Share CP Love. You can say whatever you want about it. That's cool. And then... To be entered to win, you go to the link, which we'll share in the show notes, and I think it's um, bit.ly slash sharecplove, and you put in your information. So your name, the link to wherever you shared it, so okay. like whether it's your Instagram post or your, it's your tweet or your Facebook post, you um, just just so that Shannon can see that you shared it, you know? Yeah. And, but that way, she can keep track of everybody's entries in one place instead of just trying to count them on the hashtag. So share anything. If you don't have a cooperative press book and you want it, then you can just retweet or re-Instagram either any of the pictures at cooperative press or any of mine about my cooperative press book. Sorry, I just like hit the mic. I don't know what that sounds like for you. Um, so I have some, a couple pictures on my feed recently with my book, Market Yourself. And if you regram any of those or you retweet any of them with the hashtag share CP love, you can then take that entered into the contest. I'm glad you explained that because I was like <laughs> totally confused. I saw that they were giving doing a giveaway and I followed them on Instagram, but I was I, You're like, I, they lost me yeah. as far as like the rest of it. And yeah. I was like, okay. I had to read the instructions twice, but basically share anything with that hashtag either related to one of their books or one of their posts or one of my posts or one of their many other authors. Like Laura Neal, mm -hmm. who wrote Soccer Architecture. Um I think she's Mama Onitz or Heather Ordover on Instagram. She did the Madame Defarge Knits series, which I love. They're all patterns inspired by literature. And she does the Craft Lit podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then there are lots of other ones, like the Unique You and... Oh, my goodness, I could go on and on. But um, if you if you look at my posts, you'll see uh, I link to them kind of regularly and share. Use the hashtag as a thing you have to do. <laughs> so they're all together. And then enter that link in the giveaway. So first share, then enter the link. So that makes sense. Yes. So you could just go grab the link from whatever you shared. You can you can say something about my book because you own Absolutely. it. Absolutely. <laughs> or sock architecture, or any of the many other cooperative press books. Um, and so then you'll be entered to win a book. And if you want to win my book, you should say that because not everybody who most. Everybody who enters is a knitter and wants a knitting book for sure, but if you, not everybody has a small business. So what I did for my entry um, or for my giveaway is I just ask you to tell me in the comments um, what kind of small business you have and that you would actually, you know, put my book to use because I don't want just a knitter who has no interest in business to end yeah. up with a book and be disappointed. So let's give it to somebody who really wants it. So be sure that you say that in your entry that like you have a small business and that you're interested or if you have a preference for one of the books, let us know. And that's been awesome. Like, we did an Instagram thing, like a circle, on January 29th where there's a picture of all the books and then we say, like, follow the next person and uh, go all the way around and follow and you'll be entered to win one of our books. It's a totally different giveaway oh, wow. that we did a couple of days ago. And that has been amazing. I've met so many new people on Instagram and I've gotten, like, lots I of emails from it. I know. So you guys are so awesome and your projects are amazing. If you missed that, just go back to the photo on January 29th and um, enter. I, I, it goes to February. That one goes to February 4th. So I will choose a winner for my own book on February 4th. And then after February 14th, Cooperative Press will choose lots of winners. Because actually, if you can open up our show notes. I'm sorry. The, um, well, because I don't remember the prizes for all this. The reason why you would do this is you could win a Cooperative Press book. You can also win... Um, one grand prize reader will be selected from all the entries, and she doesn't say what the grand prize is, or I didn't write it down. And the first prize winner, 
Oh, it sh I didn't write down what the prizes are. Oh no. So the prizes are awesome. One is like a hundred, oh, a hundred dollars cash mm -hmm. for a first prize winner. And then the runners up are all going to get $50 in Cooperative Press store credit. So then you can buy the book you most want. And I $50 think, um, will buy you a lot of books. I think 200 would be, was the first one, wasn't it? The grand prize? Yeah. I don't know why I didn't write that down. Because it's I Love to Win 200? Oh, uh, maybe. 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 Um, but so the first prize winner gets $100 cash, and all the runners up, of which there will be quite a few, will get $50 It says use. three right there. So Yeah. Yeah. And, um... So do that. And then the other thing I want to tell you guys about Valentine's Day is uh, there's a sh I love the yarn company and actually just the person. She's a woman, <laughs> Sasha of Sheep Spot Yarns, mm -hmm. and she partnered with um, Christine Beeson, who was my student like when I very first started like teaching businessy stuff. Um, of she does a podcast called Yarnings. It's just an audio podcast, I think. Mm -hmm. And the two of them got together and made a Valentine's Day kit. We are going to share Ooh. the link to it. It's awesome. Actually, I've got it here to show you because it's so cool. It's yarn and a cowl design and a bag. And the kits are really, really cute. And there's only a couple left. So see, it's a oh, bag and that. the yarn. Yeah, and you get a stitch marker and the, the cowl looks Shouldn't like this. So oh, I've seen that. So this She's is the yarn. Really sweet online too. Uh, Christine, mm -hmm. I know. Um, we actually have met a couple times when I was in Portland. We've had coffee, and one time we had crepes together. She's a doll. <laughs> so um, the kit is. Let me see if I can. Yeah, she's a designer. Yes. So okay. um, Sasha. For some reason, I was thinking that she was like overseas. The no, designer. no, um, no. Like I. England. Um, maybe she just seems British. <laughs> no. Seems so British Sasha too. of Sheep Spot Yarns is Canadian, which I always forget. Um because, you know, they seem so American. <laughs> but so uh, the dyer of the yarn and what Sheep Spot does, and we actually talked about it because I spun their fiber and we gave away that skein of oh, yeah. yarn. She, all of her yarns are single breed. That's so cool. they're either like from um, CVM or from BFL, like the breed, all the yarn is a single breed. And she, on her website, gives all this kind of information about what the different kinds of wools are good for and how the sheep are raised. She like gets with local farmers and collects their wool and then has it milled into a yarn and then she dyes the yarn. That's cool. So this kit was, or this yarn was milled by her and like the wool was chosen by her and dyed by her and then the cowl that you get with it, the pattern is by Christine and then there'll also be a stitch marker and a bag which is really cute. And there's only a couple left so I want to tell you guys so you can grab them up um, for Valentine's Day. And that's what the, the thing says, is like, give it to someone you love or just really, really like. <laughs> and yes. she said quite a few people have bought it for their knitting friends as a Valentine's Day gift. Aww, that's so cute. That's so, sweet. so I want to tell you guys, and you had a, a podcast that you're loving this week. I did. I finally got around. I meant to do it and I've, I'm so bad. I'll like find something I want to look at, but I don't have time to look at right then. And I'll open it on my phone browser. <laughs> yes. And then never go back to so it. So you have and like 500 so tabs. I have Truly Myrtle's website open yes. twice on my browser. <laughs> no joke. And so um, she's, she's Truly Myrtle on Instagram. And that's yeah. how I have, I have found her. She's so sweet on Instagram anyway. But she has a blog. And I'm not a, I just don't take the time to read blogs. I love blogs. But I don't, I'm bad not to just surf around and, and read them. But she, hers is 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 great, and she's a designer, and she's got a ton going on. She is so crafty, and so um, I finally remembered. Oh yeah, I wanted to watch this, and so she's had her first episode out for a couple weeks now, and I finally sat down to watch it. And she's in New Zealand and oh. has the most amazing accent. I think <laughs> she might have lived in in England or something, but she has the most amazing accent, and I just love. I could listen to her talk all day. And she had some really amazing projects that she was working on. I mean, she did everything from knit to felt to sew to she was thinking about making little change purses and had the little handle, you know, the oh. little snap things, yeah. you know. The, yeah. To, so, yeah, she had some great stuff going on. Go and I her love out. her Instagram feed. Her, oh, yeah, yeah. And her photos are gorgeous, and then mm -hmm. she models them beautifully. And yeah. she's so sweet. She leaves the sweetest comments. She so does. we love you, Truly Myrtle. We love you, Truly Myrtle. <laughs> and so, yeah, go check her out because you'll just want to listen to her over and over again. She's just awesome. And, <laughs> and so, so she, she has, has one so episode much going out. On. She just has one. Uh, but, yeah, she's 
she's just so crafty. So make your next one, Truly Myrtle. We're, we're calling you on it. <laughs> make it. Uh, we want to like hear more from you. And we will link to that at our website, Handmade Podcast. Yes. And I think that's it for us. Is that it? That seems yes. so short. It no. seems like we should have more to we talk about. We talked about a lot. <laughs> about a lot. Okay. Oh, I want to say thanks to everyone who came out to um, Knit Night at my house. It was so fun. Week. Hi, it Megan. So fun. Hi, Megan. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, one of our online friends came and joined us. I thought that was so cool. I was and, like, um, Wait, you guys are real. <laughs> you're real. We know it. Look, there's proof. So, yeah, if you are um, local to us, uh, which is like the Johnson City area, um, let me know if you want to join us. The uh, more the merrier. So. I think we're going to start a thread on Ravelry for the knit night, and yeah. we will just update it when there's a new date and time. Yeah. And then we'll give you the location via Ravelry message. Yeah, so yeah. if you want to go, just Ravelry message Misty because she's the organizer, <laughs> and we'll, we'll. But we will let you guys know like a week in advance. We'll put up yeah. the times. Um, usually, I um, try and plan it as, as far ahead as I can. And mm -hmm. there was a lot going on on the weekends this month, so we've only got. Um, Usually it's a Saturday morning, mm -hmm. and then sometimes I try. I'm gonna try and do once a month um, Friday night at my house. I think mm -hmm. is what we're gonna I do. Love that. And so, so yeah. And when we my house has the space for it, I totally want to have it one night at my house as well. And uh, yeah, so we like knitting with you. We loved meeting you, Megan, and then a couple of Misty's friends were there yes. as well. And um, we want to meet you if you are a uh, local knitter. So come, and we're really friendly and low key. It was yes. That was fun. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> uh, oh, and the next time it'll be at Panera, so that makes it a little less, um, like, you're going to somebody's house. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, it's like... At Panera. Yeah. Um, so you can, like, if we're total weirdos, you can <laughs> You can weird. be like, yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. You're but too crazy for me. Thank you so much for watching. Yes, we are so happy to have you. you and share your pictures on Instagram yes. with the hashtag handmade podcast. And find links to all of this at handmadepodcast.com. And, uh, yeah, thanks again. Hey, um, before we go, did I talk about, I know I told you about it, but did I talk about the um, make a fit to bladder clothes? You told them that you were taking it last week. Oh, so I talked about it last week. I couldn't mm -hmm. remember if I talked mm -hmm. if I'd watched it by then or not. Oh, I don't know if you've watched it. Maybe we'll talk about it next week if you actually start the pattern from it. Yeah, that'd be good idea. Yeah, yeah. Because I, uh, yeah. So the knit to flatter class is awesome on crafty, and but everything you told me is also in her book knit to flatter. So maybe we should link to that too. Yeah. Um. So it just depends on if you're a better learner, like video or reading. Which given that you're watching this, you're probably into videos. Yeah, <laughs> so I probably am. will love the crafty class. So thanks again for watching, and if you have any questions, ask us. Um, yes, we'd love to chat with you. There's on a thread Ravelry. on Ravelry. There's also the winter sweater knit along, yes. which I haven't even posted to yet because I've been knitting so studiously on my winter sweater. But I will be updating that. There's already lots of conversation there happening about like colors. That's where you had the whole yellow yeah, conversation. Yeah, the yellow conversation. We will link to that. Go and join us in knitting a sweater this winter, and I will show my finished sweater pictures there. Hopefully, my mom will model it for me. And let me like share pictures of her. She's kind of shy about that. But um, if not, then there'll at least be a picture of it on me because I'm so excited by it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, thanks again and have a great day.